diesel battery charger for my solar, actually for my battery. Uh, it's a three cylinder Caterpillar diesel and there's a Lease Neville 28 volt 200 amp alternator that charges the battery. Uh, this top box here is a voltage regulator or charger. Took the internal voltage regulator out and this is a three step charger and it also uh, senses the temperature of the alternator. If it gets too hot, it'll back it off or shut it down. Uh, below that is all my relays, stop, start, all the temperature and coolant and oil pressure shut off relays. And below that is the battery charger. Uh, this is a custom built enclosure that I made. Uh, it's running right now. That's what noise that you hear. Here in a second, I'll open the lid and show you what we're doing. Um, I also um, put a heat exchanger. We don't have a radiator per se on this. The heat exchanger goes through the radiant floor. So the coolant runs through the heat exchanger and then the radiant floor supply tubes run through the heat exchanger and this is what heats the floor in the winter time which works great for us because in the winter time we don't have a whole lot of sun so the solar panels don't do much work. Uh, we get some wind but not a lot. So we run the generator to generate heat and to charge the batteries at the same time. Uh, I've also taken the bridge rectifier out of the alternator to get some of the heat out and I found that we were about twice as efficient with an external rectifier than we were with the internal rectifier plus we get some of the heat out of the compartment in here which is a good thing so it puts the heat into this room. Um, let's see I'll show you the bridge rectifier and the heat sink that it's on That's the external bridge rectifier. Those are number two wires coming off the alternator, that bridge rectifier. And then there's uh, computer fans that keep that heat sink cooled off. Now I'll open the lid and you can see what we got going on in here. And if you can't tell, that thing's running about 1100 RPM. That's one of the things I like about the DC battery charger instead of using an AC, is an AC has to run at 1800 RPM to get the right uh, voltage to go into the Outback inverter, which is also a battery charger. Uh, with this one, I can run it at 1800 to 2000 RPM when it's cold and I need a lot of heat to run through the floor. But when it warms up a little bit in the fall and the spring, I can run uh, about 1100, 1000 RPM like it's doing right now and charge the batteries and not generate a whole lot of heat. And I haven't had any problems with uh, a bunch of crud building up in the exhaust. So that that's, hasn't been an issue so far. Um, the thing's worked great. This is the second season using it. And it's provided all the heat that we need. And it actually, uh, when it gets really cold, is usually when we're really cloudy. So we need heat and power for the batteries. So. It works great. Um, the battery I have is a basically a forklift battery, 24 volt, and that's done great for us. It's about three to four days reserve capacity if we need it, and those have been doing really good for us. Been impressed with those. So that's my uh, DC charger. I'm very happy with that so far. My battery is about 750 amp hours, so I like to run about no more than 90 amps charging into the battery. Um, when I'm running the heat pump for heating, uh, washing clothes, one of the, the well pump and things like that. I have a rheostat in between the charge controller and the alternator so I can adjust that to get stay at 90 amps going into the battery. 
and also run the heat pump and whatever else I need to re uh, run during the day. Uh, in the mornings, kids taking showers, coffee pot, toaster, hair dryers, all that stuff. So with the headroom of that big alternator, I can put 90 amps into the battery and run everything else. Uh, and it works out pretty good so far. Two years on that. Uh, later I'll make another video of all my solar stuff so you can see what I did with that.